Now that you've heard about the four D's, you might recognize, oh, crackers. I do distract myself. I do deny. I do dismiss or direct when faced with a challenge. And I would just offer some compassion. No wonder. This is how most people are socialized to navigate challenges cross-culturally, cross-gender, in my experience. So what might you do instead? I've created a framework called the four A's of navigating challenges that are just provide some key components to being more efficient and effective when, it, when faced with a challenge. The first A is acknowledge. Hey, what would happen if we just acknowledge this is challenging, this is hard, and then get a 360 view of the challenge. That starts in part by making a U-turn inward and intrapersonally attuning to what your experience is like in relationship to this challenge. That's the second A, attunement. We acknowledge, and as we acknowledge, we start to attune. First, intrapersonally, what am I feeling about this challenge? What am I thinking? What are my perceptions, my beliefs? What are my bodily sensations? Maybe what images are arising? What's the story in my head about this challenge? And where does it reside in my heart and my body? This may be a very foreign way for you to think about approaching a challenge. So just blustering through it, being curious, open, accepting. This is a challenge and I wonder why. Especially that curiosity piece and then interpersonally attuning. So it's not only about what the story is for me or my experience. If there's others involved, I wonder what their story is. I wonder why this is challenging for them. And I wonder why I'm in conflict with another person or persons or institution, right? Interpersonally attuned, what's their story? What are their feelings, thoughts, perceptions, beliefs? Maybe you don't know. Could you be curious and ask? The idea is as we acknowledge there's a challenge, if we attune, we get more data, more information about why this is challenging. We don't get stuck there because we're purposely stepping in and we're looking around and being curious. We're not getting sucked in like quicksand. People are afraid that if you get curious about a challenge, you'll get stuck there. I understand. It's because you haven't been given a way out. You think if you lean in, you're going to get sucked in. You won't understand completely how that's not true until you try this approach. I, could, I invite you to consider trying. The third A you've already started, it's adopting a stance of regulation. First self-regulation, and that can happen when you notice and name a challenge. Dan Siegel and Tina Payne Bryce would call it name it to tame it. So those of you in early childhood might already recognize that phrase, but you notice and name that there's a challenge for yourself by acknowledging and attuning. So you're already adopting the stance of self-regulation. And then if there's others involved, especially children, that will allow you to be in a more balanced state emotionally and physically so you can offer co-regulation, which is what children need, not want, in order to work through challenges. So as we acknowledge the challenge, we intrapersonally and interpersonally attune, we're adopting the stance of regulation. When we're in a place of regulation, that means the brain is in a state of integration so that it can bring more resources to bear on resolving the challenge. Our brain is integrated. We haven't flipped our lid and we're not reacting from the downstairs brain. We're able to use a lot of our thinking and cognitive capacities if we are in a stance of regulation. So the fourth A then is ask. Not ask yourself how to solve the problem, but instead ask yourself, what do I need? So first, what do I need to be feeling resourced in this moment? What do I need to feel safe, satisfied, and connected so that I can bring more to bear on resolving the problem? And then what do others need? What might others need? Being curious about that all before we even choose a solution. So this is like some, you know, just taking an inventory, acknowledging, attuning, adopting, and asking. And then from a brain perspective, you are satisfying the brain's curiosity. Remember I said the brain strives to make sense of things outside of your conscious control. So even if you move on from a problem, your brain might not. So we use our mind, our awareness to help the brain feel seen, soothed, safe, and secure. So we can actually bring more balance and reason to our problems. 
to navigate challenges with more efficiency and effectiveness and perhaps more uh, better long-term outcomes. Perhaps. Just see what would happen if you started to create a habit where you noticed when you were dismissing, denying, distracting, and directing, and perhaps started to lean in with curiosity, openness, acceptance, and love to acknowledging, attuning, adopting, and asking. It can be difficult to do on your own, so if you want support with that, you can email me, and I'm 